Welcome, welcome to Wrestle Line, the show that kicks arse and takes names every time. Hosted by John Scott and Matt Essex. Yes, hello and welcome to, uh, well, the relaunch. We said we were going to have stuff come out today for the relaunch and... uh, yeah, this is a little bit of it. Uh, we had a little funky intro to the show. Hope uh, everybody likes it and gets a little bit of a kick out of it. Um, obviously, we don't take ourselves way over serious here. But uh, yeah, I thought the intro will save me a bit of time um, of always introducing myself and Matt every week. And I uh, thought it'd uh, you know, save you guys as well. And a uh, nice little jingle to it. Um, and lots to go through on this, uh, well, this relaunch day. I guess this is the beginning of the relaunch, I, I should say, because there's still a little bit of a process to go. And um, I want to thank everybody that's uh, sent some kind messages uh, yesterday and um, actually last night um, on the dot around midnight. I had quite a few people emailing me uh, just to say good luck and everything for today. And uh, yeah, it's been been a very good turnout and um going to bring Matt into the the conversation now Matt but uh, I know we were you and I were talking off air just before this and um we were talking about how well the the launch had gone and of course um all our other sort of social media platforms that we're now on we're sort of well I'm getting used to it anyway um but we're, we're doing well I think that's the main thing it's uh, definitely in the right direction yeah, a lot of big changes there, and uh, moving with the times now, you know, can't get left behind in the past, uh, so we're definitely on top of that, and uh, yeah, it's good to be on all these different uh, social media platforms now, because uh, just re- it just reaches that wider audience, and uh, no matter where you are, you can always find us. Yeah, and uh, we're literally on loads of different things. Now, guys, I'm not going to bore you with all that, but I know you some, some of you lot are, um, are wanting to find out more, so we are going to cover that. Don't worry, we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show, about where you can find us, um, because there's a few little announcements. And I did say I would give all the sort of good exclusives on this podcast, because you guys are the loyal support that we've had from day one. So um, I'm going to bring that up later on in the show. But coming up on the show today, then, uh, of course, everything WWE Raw Reunion. The big topic of discussion uh, from Monday, I think, uh, coming out of that. And, um, you know, did it have the effect it needed? Was the USA Network happy and all the rest of it? We'll uh, we'll definitely have a few conversations about that, I'm sure, and get your feedback on that as well. Plus, what about CM Punk then? Yeah, he's resurfaced. He's going to StarCast. And, of course, lots of uh, rumours coming out about the possibilities about an approach from possibly Tony Khan uh, making him an offer at AEW. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, We've got other stuff coming on as well. I want to give a few shout-outs to some good causes that are going to be happening over the weekend. Uh, What about the new WWE Network? Have you used it? Uh, Let me know. Email us in, wrestleline at gmail.com. I'll be interested to see what your feedback is. I've had a few people's feedback so far, but um, if anyone wants to try out and uh, get in touch, let us know. And uh, along with that, what about um, coming up SummerSlam, of course, which is not far off now, a couple of weeks now to build this. Um, Have WWE got enough? And a few little extra add-ons, I believe, that are going to be taking place um, to this. And lastly, we're going to be talking all things a little bit more business side of WWE. The uh, the quarter earnings came in and some very, very interesting uh, conversations took place during some interviews and press um, that Vince McMahon was, uh, was there for. So um, he was really on the spot. And uh, yeah, going to be interesting to find out and uh, let you guys know a little bit about the inside workings in, in terms of business because we do talk about that a lot on the podcast. Uh, but yeah, Matt, let's uh, let's kick the show off then from the top. And uh, of course, Monday night um, saw um, Raw, and it was like sort of going back as they always do, Matt. Um, you know what, twenty five years ago, whatever. Um, of course, this wasn't an anniversary show. I should point that out. A lot of people kept um, asking me, "What is this for?" I thought we already had it at the beginning of the year. We did. Um, this was just something that USA literally said to WWE, we want you to have a reunion. We want a bumper rating. 
And um, believe it or not, Matt, USA Network have replayed Raw another two times. They never do that, but they uh, they replayed it straight after Raw had finished live, and then they also replayed it on the Tuesday. Uh, so they really wanted to stretch this out. Stone Cold Steve Austin on the show. Um, would he make all the difference uh, to the viewing statistics? We still don't know. Um, quite accurately yet but um, you know my guess is absolutely it would go up but let's be honest um, you know it was always going to wasn't it Um, I I think that's that's not really the issue Um, but uh, Matt what did you make of this um, this very odd timed reunion you know two weeks from SummerSlam you know, very, very odd placement to have this, Matt, considering we're trying to sort of build matches here towards SummerSlam. And in my opinion, there there isn't a, an awful lot coming out of that at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a strange time for it. Uh, around SummerSlam time, you would be expecting the show to be selling itself. Um, you're supposed to have these fans drawn in and invested in storylines that are currently going on, but apparently not. They, they feel like they need... Uh, some outside help so I'm surprised they got so many of these uh, legendary uh, wrestlers to come back uh, on such short notice because uh, this uh, this idea hasn't been in the pipeline for months I'd say so you know, just uh, call people up and say hey fancy coming down to Raw and having a bit of a party but apparently a lot of them are always up for a party <laughs> um, definitely Ric Flair we know is and uh, Stone Cold yeah definitely yeah. a few beers afterwards <laughs> so you know that's great for them but uh, yeah so it is nice when you see these kind of reunions but what a weird time and uh, I do feel like there's other points in the year when the rains really do go down and there's a, there's a real drop off on fans. I feel like saving these kind of moments for those times is a is a better idea. Yeah, I almost feel like WWE should have. Um, it would have been more beneficial to have have the cameras rolling on like a, a 24 episode of Steve Austin and Ric Flair's aftermath. Follow them around the bars. Uh, I'm sure that'd be more entertaining um, than than the Raw reunion. Look, I have nothing against the Raw reunion, but I just thought. Uh, you know, in terms of getting over the guys that are on the current roster, what a waste of time um, to do that. You know, um, realistically, um, I would say, well, Mick Foley, yeah, he he done um I mean, Mick Foley, let's be honest, Mick, he's such a modest guy. He knows what's good for the business of now. You only got to go back to when he, he put over Randy Orton and, you know, he, he sold like hell for him and, and edge and guys like that. He knows the future Mick Foley. So you get a guy like him back. He's not got no ego. He always, and, and I'm sure what he, you know, he's thing for Bray. I'm sure that was more his idea than WWE's. Um, and, you know, bar that, a lot of the other stuff, really, um, rather than putting over people, it was almost like, let's just rip into the, the current guys and have the legends go over. It was it was extremely strange. Also, um, speaking of legends, I didn't realise, um, what's her name, um, Alicia Fox was now considered that now, and uh, she she just turned up randomly. So, I'm, am I to believe now, Matt? She's not an active wrestler anymore, and she just that's her role is sort of a legends role now in the WWE. This, this is the same thing that I was thinking. I was like, wait a minute, I thought she was active still, but mm. apparently, yeah, not. Um, um, and I suppose we shouldn't be really too surprised because she has had a very long career and uh, although she's not old um, you know doing this for that long can take a toll on your body so she's like ready to sort of you know pack it in so then like good for her because uh, she's had a great career and uh, she has held the women's title so you know you can tick that off the list yeah yeah she was there I just thought it was a bit random like you've got there's legends and then there's legends, you know, there's there's different ones. But it was just a bit of a cluster for me, all this lot. It really was. It did seem like they got all these guys back in time, but it was all very frantic. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a match in there. I mean, how random was that, the selection they picked, Matt, of, of guys that came out for it? Like, Van Damme, you know, like, he's teaming up. Like, it was just such a weird combination of people. Um, well, it was weird because Van Damme's like technically a TNA yeah. talent. He's starting with TNA. It's like, yeah. oh, well, that's a bit. <laughs> Bend some rules at. to make it happen. Yeah, it shows where they're at currently, doesn't it? Um, for mm. him to be but showing then, up on there. but 
One other thing I want to say, like, for you, mm. this 24-7 title, that whole thing that went on on that night, was you okay with that? Because for me, I just really wasn't okay with that. I mean, it, yeah, it's a bit of nostalgia. It's a, it reminds you of the hardcore title and when people like Pat Patterson and that were involved in that scene. But for me, oh, it was just so cringy. I couldn't, <laughs> like, every time a scene came on, I was like, no, please, no. And then Spud losing it, I was like, poor Spud. Or... or Drake Maverick. Yeah, be careful. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, the, the thing is, here's the thing, and, and I'll say this now about finding it offensive. Listen, I found most of the entire show like that. It wasn't just mm. that. It, it was like, especially the ending, especially the whole DX thing, tagging out what this new group that have renamed themselves, they're no longer the club. Um and, you know, I'm like, okay, so these guys, let's try and make them something now. And we've got AJ, we've got, we got Gallows and Anderson where we need them. And, again, DX coming out. I mean, it's getting slightly boring now. Like, they come out so much that it starts to lose its appeal. Like, from going from an absolute novelty-type thing, all of a sudden now I'm thinking, this is, you know, Nats DX in the click and... Oh man, it, it just seems so ill conceived. And I thought to myself, like, there's no way um, these guys back in their day would have been jobbing like this for, for legends above them. You know, you wouldn't have seen Bruno San Martino come in and take out Hogan or Stone Cold be kind of overshadowed like AJ was. Um, I don't know, to a guy like Hogan at the time or whatever. You know, it, it really was just ill conceived. And I. I just think, you know, like I said, the the only sort of positive thing was, okay, Bray Wyatt, he gets that, gets to make a, as Booker T says, statement on uh, Mick. But then only today, I, to my horror, I find out there's a, there's a post of Bray Wyatt completely out of character as usual, um, saying thank you to Mick. And I'm like, we haven't even gone seven days yet. At least keep it going until SummerSlam. That that what he did was absolutely dis- disrespectful to Foley. But no, he's thanking him because basically he's thinking what we're just talking about. He's the only guy that showed up and put someone over. Um, but to come out of character and do that oh, just blows me away. But but then I shouldn't be surprised because there was a photo going around of Braun Strowman holding his child. You had Bray Wyatt in there, just at, completely out of character in the middle. Who was the other guy, Matt? I can't remember now. No, I can't remember. Either. Oh, but there was, yeah, there, was, photo, there was someone else. I mean, too often that happens. Oh, it just takes you out of the dude. moment. And, yeah, it's okay to be on social media, but if you're going to do that, you should have some privacy settings. <laughs> Don't post them. Just keep the photos to yourselves. That's the same thing with this Bray Wyatt thing. Why couldn't you have just sent Mick a text? Um, or a private message, why do we publish this stuff so that now, you know, you're you're trying to get fans to be into the product, but you're going to go out your way at every opportunity to come out a story and and, and kind of make it so obvious what's going on and the politics. Um, So, yeah, you know, listen, we had Hogan, Flair, Steve Austin was there, um... I mean, John Cena, Matt, he was there at the beginning. Um, Uh, Were you disappointed you didn't get to see him dance, though? Oh, uh, yeah. I I was, like, glad. I I thought he saved himself some credibility there. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you, I was not uh, I was not disappointed in that. And I actually thought what a waste of having John Cena there anyway, to be honest with you. Um, Yeah, just made no no sort of crazy sense. I mean, um, Jerry Lawler was there and I found him even though he's not you could tell he's not in tune with the current product he ain't watching that that's for sure but he still sounds more entertaining than most of the other people on commentary at the moment which is staggering but a, a guy that's not really in tune with the product is still entertaining me more um, yeah it was just for me I mean I might sound a bit grouchy yes it was a, a better show than normal but that's only because of the amount of guys that were there but let's be honest everything those legends done it was all we knew what was going to take place it was all the little novelty acts it wasn't anything that was was sort of drawing me into SummerSlam anymore or or, or at least I thought well maybe you know um, 
the club. Maybe they're going to really do something and beat the hell out of DX. 